And speaking of <laughs> apocalyptic. Russia, Russia, Russia. I think you train, you train, you train, new world order. New York Post.com. Putin deploys world's largest submarine with apocalypse drone capabilities. No, we're we're done for now. I feel like this the all the Russia Ukraine stories are just kind of repeating. They have like a a set of ideas and uh, like, like a little blueprint on how to make this war happen, <laughs> and they're just rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat. Here's what the New York Post says here. A military train that belongs to the forces responsible for Russia's nuclear arsenal has been spotted moving toward the front lines in Ukraine, while Moscow was said to have deployed the world's biggest submarine capable of carrying apocalypse drone. These latest maneuvers could signal an increasingly desperate Vladimir Putin's willingness to escalate the war following a series of embarrassing defeats on the battlefield, including the loss of a key city in Donetsk and the most recent setback in the Kherson region. The pro-Russian telegram channel Rybar shared on Sunday video showing a freight train hauling upgraded armored personnel carriers, APCs, and other sophisticated military equipment through central Russia. You know, again, you know, it, yeah, we, we've, we've seen stuff like this in the U.S. too, which is why I'm always skeptical when I see stuff like this. It's like, okay, well, we, we have the same thing. You know, somebody in Telegram or some kind of social media will take video of a some kind of convoy uh, roll through some small town. And they're like, hey, what's this all about? Where's, you know, where, what are they doing here? And uh, I'm not saying that there's nothing there. Obviously, it's the military moving things around. But what, the, the, you know, for what reason, all that kind of stuff can be easily sort of implied depending on the the pe person reporting it and captioning some of these photos and videos the apcs reportedly belong to the secretive 12th mainstream directorate of the russian ministry of defense which is responsible for maintaining the country's nuclear arsenal so yeah there you go yeah, they, they, there you go you, they must be moving nukes putin must be afraid meanwhile nato warned its member states including the u.s that Russia's Belgorod nuclear submarine has left its base in the Arctic Circle, the Italian newspaper La Repubblica reported. No, an Italian newspaper reporting it. Now, okay. Measuring more than 600 feet in length, the Belgorod is the largest submarine in the world. It is capable of carrying, quote-unquote, doomsday Poseidon nuclear torpedo drones, which, according to Russia, could trigger 1,600-foot nuclear tsunamis that would inundate coastal cities from hundreds of miles away and render them uninhabitable for decades. Belgorod, which only entered the Russian Navy service in July, is regarded as, quote, the epitome of a new concept of warfare, and Poseidon is known as the, quote, weapon of the apocalypse. All right, so <laughs> Putin has deployed the weapon of the apocalypse. And perhaps you know, tying all the things together, I'm not saying this is what's going to happen. I'm just saying that if they pull off some kind of explosion that causes some chemicals to spread and, you know, the only way it'll be sort of its own type of pandemic, the only way to withstand it is some kind of genetic padding. We need a genetic patch. Uh, and I mean patch in the, in the way programmers use it, you know, developers use it. In programming, you know, they you find a bug in the in the code, you got to patch it. Similarly, you know, they're going to say, hey, you know, the environment has changed, and you know, we have this nuclear spill and and these chemicals and whatnot. Uh, we we need we need to shore up the uh, human genome if we're going to survive these changes. And so, yeah, if you don't get it, then you're you're going to die. Same kind of deal. Quote. This nuclear mega torpedo is unique in the history of the world. American submarine expert H.I. Sutton wrote on his website Covert Shores in March, quote, Poseidon is a completely new category of weapon. It will reshape naval planning in both Russia and the West, leading to new requirements and new counter weapons. And it goes into a bunch of stuff the U.S. has said and la da 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 da. At the very end of the article, it says here in an interview on ABC's This Week on Sunday, former CIA director David Petraeus predicted that if Putin were to deploy nuclear weapons, the U.S. and other NATO members would destroy Russia's forces and sink the Black Sea fleet. OK, of course. And that story has its own 
uh, media uh, reporting, which uh, I have here from CNBC, ex-CIA chief's greatest concern in the Russia-Ukraine conflict is escalation spiraling out of control, in quotes. Uh, of course, ex-CIA. Nobody's truly ex-CIA, are they? Especially if you're talking in the media. Come on. All right. The greatest worry for David Petraeus, a former CIA director and retired U.S. Army general concerning the war in Ukraine is the potential for unbridled escalation that would result uh, that would result in catastrophic consequences. He told CNBC on Tuesday. Asked what his top concern was with regard to the Russia-Ukraine conflict in which the U.S. is heavily supporting Ukraine to the tune of billions of dollars in military aid. Petraeus replied, quote, just as a general category, it's just the risk of it spiraling out of control. Quote, I think it is legitimate for U.S. leadership and for leadership of other countries to avoid starting World War III, as the phrase has been termed. Okay, who? Who termed it? <laughs> you? Are you terming it now? Are you basically saying this will start World War III? Are you talking about the media? Are you talking about the lizard people? Okay, so anyway, so yeah, he, he's saying, hey, it'd be bad if the nation started World War III. Which, again, a little plausible deniability. These people want World War III. They are probably putting all the pieces together to make that a reality of, of some kind, or at least... Yeah, you know, keep it some kind of uh, keep the tension going because tension creates change and so on. Uh, this article continues. Leaders in Ukraine and the West are grappling with Russian President Vladimir Putin's threat of using nuclear weapons. Uncertainty over the likelihood of such action hangs over decision making, even as Ukrainian forces Ukrainian forces stage bold counteroffenses and uh, uh, counteroffenses. Yeah, in territory in Russia has illegally annexed. Or that Russia. Oh, okay. Yeah. Completely messed up that sentence, but it's because it's kind of irrelevant. It goes into just the talking points of, yeah, Ukraine good, Russia bad. Uh, but anytime you see ex CIA in the news, just keep in mind, probably not ex. You know, they got friends. I think about not just necessarily in some kind of official capacity, but just in the human experience, you know? If you're part of an organization and you are surrounded by people that are part of that network, the intelligence network, you can retire, you can step down from certain positions, but you know, your, your circle of friends are just, they're going to be people in intelligence, right? So it's, it's not, it's not so much that there's some official capacity that we can verify, but it's very suspicious and you always think. You always have to think that you know, there's more to it than just some ex CIA guy just you know randomly being interviewed on CNBC and talking about how it'd be so bad if all the nations or some of the nations out there started World War Three. It'd be very bad, very bad. And the Sun.co.uk uh, also uh, reports NATO warning as Putin deploys world's biggest submarine, which can be armed with terrifying nuclear apocalypse drone torpedoes. And yeah, this is kind of the same story again, but yeah, in any case, um, yeah, that, there isn't a whole lot to talk about when it comes to the Ukraine thing right now, just because we've sent them the money. Okay. We're saber rattling. Uh, Putin's mad. Yeah, there's, there's stuff being taken, but it's sort of just continued tensions. It's another story in the news and, uh, you know, it's tough to really know exactly what's going on other than. They definitely want it to continue, like the, the tension and the drama to continue. I, I feel I sense some burnout out here in the West, but uh, they definitely are going to keep keep moving forward with that. Uh, but one more aspect of this whole Ukraine Russia thing, and I uh, bring this from another CNBC.com article: Ukrainian ambassador tells Elon Musk to f off after billionaire infuriates nation with Twitter poll, and this is uh, something that. We talked about it in the last episode where uh, Elon Musk on Twitter ran a poll as sort of a, you know, it wasn't openly supporting Russia, but it was sort of arguing for a, a redo of the whole Russian situation that's taking place in Ukraine. And I made the point that this is just a clear indication of where we're headed in terms of a, a worldwide democracy. And it's not going to be. Uh, through the traditional channels of politics, it'll be more with social media and the tech giants and a poll 
Uh, because there, there was like a, over a million and a half people that voted. That's a lot of people. And so in any case, um, yeah, this is just, you know, it triggered one of the Ukrainian, Ukrainian ambassadors. This is no surprise, but you know, he, he should, he should just relax. You know, just Elon being Elon, he's grabbing attention. At least he's t- keeping the conversation going in the news. And so you got, you got to give it to him. So anyway, 